Welcome to this channel. This channel is for education and culture based on historical and scientific evidence. So after I share the YouTube on how to beat a taller or shorter opponent and the video how to use the short strike of 1850 Wing Chun to defeat the opponent. I have received many messages from our Wing Chun friends, uh, Kung Fu friends and martial art friends. And uh, one of the top question, uh, one of the top message is, Hendrik, how come I don't learn this before? The second type is, isn't that uh, Wing Chun is a philosophical concept art that it is up for everybody to, uh, to fight however they want? Well, today I like to answer these two questions. Now, I want to answer these two questions with Chinese culture and what is the reality in ancient Chinese teaching. It is not about me is a grandmaster or the best fighter or the king of Wing Chun. Got nothing to do with that. Is we want to look into the history, the evidence in the history. Okay, now, so in the previous videos, please check into it if uh, you uh, don't see th these two videos. Now I'm going to recap some of it before I continue on to share with you the big picture. Now. I'm talking really slow here. Please speed up the video when you watch this video. The reason I speak slowly because I don't want to slur through this. I want it to be really clear for you. So that way you can learn something. It is important thing. Okay, now, in the previous video recap, I have presented that short strike art, Wing Chun short strike art is the art fighting this close. Okay, and it has four arm. The legs is attacking, the body is attacking, and you have two arms. That's Wing Chun Short Strike 1850. Now, also I have presented that if the opponent is shorter, you want to attack to the solar plexus level. And sometimes you want to attack high to bait him to come in. So your, your upper cut and so forth is waiting for him. And if the opponent is taller, you are shorter, then you want to go in close, take away his leg, get this close, and you can bomb it hit with strike and all sort of stuff. So that is in the previous video. Okay, this is just recap. Now, as for the short strike art, I have shared that you don't want to block or parry his wrist area or the elbow area. You want to get in to the shoulder area and you use your body positioning to, if this is uh, the, the uh, square off, this is his two hand, this is my two hand, using one side to limit or limiting 
his the side of the arm and then you want to force him to make this arm of him as a defensive arm while you are offensive here and attacking here and that is using the advantage of your body attack because you put your body in the position so that you are forcing him that this arm of him become limit uh, is a limiting action okay and this become defensive where you become you are here you can strike him okay that is one uh, key point on the short strike now if it is entering from here your body position in is in the positions of you limiting this arm while you're using this arm to isolate that arm while you're striking him here attacking him here so that is the body positioning or the body strategy of the short strike art okay now also i have mentioned that you don't fight him like his two arm like that you don't fight him this way because if you fight him this way that is actually you're competing for who is high speed or who is stronger okay now also if you're fighting this way you will be opening for the takedown okay the grabbing down there and also i want to add on more today you don't fight him this way your body slant this way and in the middle center line this way because if you fight him this way he's going to go to your back okay so if you face the opponent this way you don't fight him in the horizontal way where you want to racing or compete for power and speed or getting take down okay also you don't want to fight him this way slant this way where he can go back go to your back okay so that is the body positioning so you avoid standing this way you avoid standing this way you always want standing in a slant way so that your body you make use of your body position you always limiting his hand uh, one hand and then you always make it this hand become defensive because you're going to strike him here and and so forth and also if you are here you always limiting this hand and then you make this to isolate that hand so that is the body positioning hopefully this is very clear okay so this i have shared with you the very basic of short strike art wing chun 1850 okay not even get into other stuff yet this is really plain simple so you know how this leg is attacked as i share with you here okay and you know how the body positioning you need to to, to place so that that is actually the, the leg and the body is extra beside or in addition in additional to your two hand or your techniques of the two hand okay now from this <clears throat> you see this i recap this already okay now so any wing chun 1850s fighter when it engage into a fight you will expect to see this type of characteristic how they handle their leg to take a, take out you take out your leg 
how the body handling the positioning so always how to manage the the, the opponents arms and how if uh the opponent is taller and shorter one handle it okay now this is a typical norm however you need to know the the following this is critical this is what people today in kung fu and wing chun miss a big time so there actually there are three level of learning in kung fu especially those who related to to to, to shaolin to buddhist art and uh, by mean of shaolin and buddhist art i mean the real one not just the the, the, the talking one okay now like wing chun okay now so in learning of uh, a martial art in in uh, in in the buddhist or, or zen way there are three levels the first level is as the jan saying when you see a mountain it is a mountain the second level is when you see a mountain it is no longer a mountain the third level is when you see a mountain it is a mountain so for the beginner very beginner is when you see a mountain it is a mountain and uh, for those who are into it have experience and are uh, uh, working hard on it when you see a mountain it is not a mountain on the top those who have experience who have attainment will be at the state of when one see a mountain it is a mountain now let me explain at the very beginner level when you see a mountain it is a mountain it is like this because we have no clue no idea on what is a mountain so you see a mountain and you say, well, this is a mountain, right? That is beginning, beginner's state. Now, the guy who worked into it and know more and more experience and work hard on it, when they see a mountain, they no longer see a mountain. They will say, oh, I see this. This is a forest here. I see this, this is a waterfall here. I see this, this is always foggy in the morning. I see this, this is always, it, it looks like the, over here, uh, the, 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 the trees is not growing good. Oh, over here, it's growing well. You see all those kind of things. So a mountain is no longer a mountain. You see all those things. Now, the guy who is an expert on the mountain will say, oh, yeah, this is mountain. A mountain is a mountain because you go through the beginner, the everything on uh, this uh, waterfall here, river here, uh, this forest in the mountain, blah, 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 going through all this thing. And the person practically know all about this mountain. So a mountain is a mountain. You talk about mountain, it's a mountain. Now, it is very different from the person who is beginner looking at a mountain is a mountain and the the guy who is on the top who have the attainment and say a mountain is a mountain okay now so how is this in the uh this type of level in martial art in wing chun for example the beginner, a tan sao, a fok sao, a chain pan. That is a tan sao, a fok sao, a chain pan. That's called a beginner. When you get to the second level, the technique is no longer a technique. You suddenly concern on 
hey, my leg have to attack him. Hey, my body position, do I, do I actually limiting his hand, uh, one arm? Uh, do I make this, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, defensive? Oh, I shouldn't, I shouldn't put this way because he's going to go to my back. Oh, I shouldn't go flat like this because he's going to wrap me. Oh, if he's uh, too tall, then, then what I should do, okay? Or if he's too short, what should I do? You're keeping working on all of this as what I just shared with you in the beginning of this video. So there is the state of a mountain. It's no longer a mountain. It is all those things. Now, when you get to the third state, a mountain is a mountain. Remember we talked about don't, don't, uh, don't, don't, don't do this way. Don't fight it by put a body position like this because uh, if you put a body position like that, he's going to come to my back. Well, the guy on the top of the mountain see the mountain as a mountain. It's fine for him to do that. Why? Because he is baiting the, the, the opponent to come in to my back. So what wrong? There's nothing wrong there. So all rules off. Who said I cannot fight this? Boom, 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 back. Who said I cannot fight that? Who said there's a rule that I always have to be this land and this land? Who said that? Or who said that if uh, the opponent is shorter, I always have to punch him in the solar plexus? Well, I'm going to go for head. Hey, come on in because I'm waiting for you. Maybe my leg attack or maybe my uppercut. So that is the state of a mountain. It's just a mountain. A techniques is techniques. There's no rule. Whatever. Bruce Lee said that as what? Using no way as way. That is as the third state. Okay, now let's face the reality. So, if we use the martial today, if you train serious as a Kyokushin Kai fighter, you get a black belt and above. I mean, you're a fighter, you fought in the tournament always. You for sure, is in this third level. A mountain is a mountain. If you are a BJJ by a uh, black belt and above, who fought constantly, that is also the state. The judo player, the same. They are in this third level and above. Okay? Now, same with Western boxing, same with Thai boxing, same with wrestling. I pick Kyokushin, BJJ, Jiu-Jitsu, Judo because that is this belt system. So when the belt is above black belt you better have gone through the 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 the, the three state okay mountain is a mountain a mountain no longer is mountain and a mountain is a mountain and it keep still keeping learning keeping fighting keeping learning keeping improving okay the problem in today's Wing Chun is it's stuck into the beginner state. A mountain is a mountain. This is Tan Sao, this is Fuk Sao, this is whatever hand. 
and you have to punch in this way, you have to turn in this angle, and you have to do your chi sao this way, and you see even people doing chi sao looking sideways, you know, all those kind of stuff, even though they are bad habit. Now, with all those things, then everybody said, well, you know, Wing Chun is a philosophical conceptual act. Everybody be able to interpret, I'm going to punch this, blah, blah, blah. But guess what? They don't know about the leg attack. They no, don't know about the handling of the body, the angle, and so forth. They don't know about fighting the, the, the tall guy or short guy. And then they keep in saying their philosophy, their others, and then Bruce Lee said, no way is way, and so forth, so forth, so forth. Philosophy, it is completely missing the, the point of the ancient Chinese. And that's why today's Kung Fu is no can do when you get up to the, the Kyokushin Open or the, uh, the MMA Open. Why? Because you are in the first level. You are not even in second. That's why you never learn all those things. And you are not even in the third because you don't spar enough. You don't see enough. You don't get into enough scenario. Okay? So this is the reality. Kung Fu or Wing Chun today stuck into the first level and keeping this technique, that technique, making movie, this technique, that technique, that technique, this philosophy, that philosophy, this jing, this whatever. But when you get into a, like a kyokshin open or something, everybody fall apart. Why? Because all the fighter from the, the, the kyokshin, kyokushin, the BJJ, everybody, everybody go through that three-state education, that Zen education. It is not like because Bruce Lee said using no way as way and then I'm saying using no way as way uh, be like water my friend I mean come on people go through that mountain is no longer a mountain for a long period of time oh my body has to enter this way my body has to enter this way no, no way. He's going to get from my back. Okay, how can I get it out? And so forth, so forth, so forth. A long term of a mountain is not a mountain. And then they're keeping fighting, fighting. They have the experience. They get up to... A mountain is a mountain. Okay? So... With all our friends asking me, one hundred. How come I never see this? You look into the past one hundred thirty years or so in Wing Chun or in other Kung Fu, especially the worst thing is Tai Chi. Did they know all this thing? They don't. And I'm saying that most of it, maybe a small part, no, but they keep quiet. But most majority in the in the mass public have no idea on this. Are you serious? You want to fight a BJJ black belt? If you say, yeah, grandmaster, yeah, grandmaster only on what? On the first level. Oh, I mean, what is grandmaster? You're keeping doing your chi sao this way and strike this way. Big deal. People are going to come in. And what, what about if the guy is this tall or the guy is this short? Are you going to do a chi sao, same thing like that? Well, what is the use of this chi sao? Like, for example, people always doing demonstration in Wing Chun. Oh. You know, if he punch me this way, I block this way, that way. Well, because he's your student. The proper thing is, you want to do a demo, a proper demo. When he punch you, you go in. You lock him with the, with the body strategy, body position, as what I share. Limit one side of his hand. Make this hand defensive, and then all your techniques, whatever turns out, whatever here is apply here. But it's not. It's like you stand like this, you do this technique. Well, this is because he's your student. So this is what happened. So is Wing Chun a concept art? Or Wing Chun a, a 
philosophical art? Absolutely no. What I'm sharing with you just now, the first thing, if you watch my other video, the fighting tall opponent and short opponent, it is just one of the 32 momentum of General Chi Chi Kuang. Whatever I'm sharing with you, all those things, how you position your body, how you want to nail him, take him out from your leg and so forth, it's just the basic of a short strike. If you don't know this, how, how is the thing function? Keeping practice your Shulim Tao like that, thinking that you have uh, all this magic power, how are you going to play when you get here? Because you'll be struggle. They're going to wrap you around. Again, at this, when they're going to lock you and uh, try to make submission everything, how is your short strike apply here? Well, your inch power is not like you got a guy, put a phone book, <coughs> pa uh, punch like a Bruce Lee. No. It is here when you struggle with this. Okay? That's inch power. When it's too close, isn't it? Wing Chun is a short, short strike, close quarter art. So, what is your Chi Sao is for? It's practically useless. When you get this close, nobody is going to stay there. If you stay there, people is going to get their position, go to your back, all sort of stuff. Test it out in the uh, UFC. I have some friends who wrote me here. So today I tell you the truth, whatever it is, the reality. <coughs> okay? So, this is what I share is just a tip of iceberg of the ancient Chinese and ancient Wing Chun. I don't even claim that I know it all. I just know this little tip of iceberg. If we never go through that three level of uh, of training. No way you can face a Kyokushin fighter, BJJ fighter, Jiu Jitsu fighter, and uh, Judo fighter. And the Western boxers equivalent and the, the, uh, the Thai boxer equivalent. Okay. Reality. So this is what I like to share with you. This is how bad it is today. This is how bad it is today. You don't even have the basic of what the Japanese martial art has. Okay? You don't have it. You don't have we're not even talking about something advanced and so forth. You don't even have the basic three state of training. And stop using Bruce Lee's words. Using no way as way. Look at Uncle Bruce Lee. How much time he spent on this mountain is no longer mountain state. How much sparring, how much uh, bodybuilding, and go through everything. Look at his book, the 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 the, the Tao of Jack Kundo. How many, how much note they they make he make. You know that when he make that note, is in his brain. He's thinking about it day and night. Are you sure that you're gonna just buy his 
Dao of Jeet Kune Do, and then uh, you just uh, put the slogan here, using no way as way, and then you'll be like Bruce Lee, you daydream. You need to look into his Dao of Jeet Kune Do, and you look at every detail, how much time Bruce has spent in it, until he get to the level of mountain, it's just a mountain. Instead of sticking in the mountain, is a mountain beginner and saying, Hey, Bruce Lee never uh, learned uh, uh, this set, never learned that set, never learned this Kung Fu. I mean, what are you talking about? So this is a straight talk today. A reality we all need to know.